This conference will now be recorded. Okay, thanks again for joining the session and my name is Adam. So in the continuation of the previous session of Docker, so the agenda for what we are going to learn today is practically we will be seeing how is it that we will be able to manage the Docker images and for automating the image creation, how is that we'll be using Docker file and post that, how is that you will be able to upload it to a specific Docker registry, okay? So that's what we are going to learn in this session. Now, to continue from what we had left in the previous session, we were trying to see how a image in Docker can be created, right? Quickly, as a recap, if you want to create an image, you need to first find out what is the base layer or the base image that you want. And from that, you're going to create a temporary container in which you're going to put all the instructions or the steps that you want. And from this container, you're going to basically make a copy and convert it into an image. And this will be your final image that you can use it. Now, this is typically a manual way of doing it. However, what happens is in real time, there will be a lot of scenarios in which the instructions or the steps that you want to do to create an image will not be just as simple as what we are seeing here. So there will be many complicated steps that you have to do or multiple steps. So whenever you have that requirement, as well as if you have a requirement to generate the image very frequently, now when do you want to do that? So if you actually go back and try to relate the build process with the image creation process, that is now, instead of creating just a build artifact that you want to give to a QA, even a QA can now test a product which has been available inside the image. Because just like how we saw in the last class that, okay, if I want Nginx or if I want Apache or if I want any application, instead of we installing it, we can just take an image which already has all these things pre-installed. So depending on our need, if we take an image and just create a container, we will have our application already pre-installed. That is the complete environment, whatever you need is available inside it. And then by just creating the container, by default, you're also starting the application inside using the first command. And you don't have to do any kind of installation or your setup time is completely reduced. So that is where in real time, we can think of using Docker also majorly on the deployment. That is where Docker is going to replace the traditional deployment. So now if you think in real time, if I give you an image wherein you have your entire application that is needed and all the supporting files that is needed to start your application is being put and created as an image, then what happens? The same thing is what a dev guy can use or we can give it to QA or this is what we can take and put into a production machine and run it as a application. So now if you think in that way, it is the image which is what we are going to give it as a final deliverable. Okay, so it is not that we are going to just create a jar or a var file, but take the jar or a var, put it inside the image and give this image so that if anyone wants to have your application running install instead of you know they taking it up and manually doing a installation which is what we call it as deployment you can take this image of your requirement and create a container whenever you need so that is where now as part of our software build process once you create a jar or a var instead of delivering that jar or a var you can put the jar or a var and create an image and give the image as a deliverable. So if I say this now, your deliverable is going to be a Docker image, which will contain the build artifact like jar or a var. 
so for a qa whenever there is a need they have to test it so that is where now whenever that you are doing a formal build for a qa or for a production then instead of creating the just regular artifact of jara revar you are going to create a image which is going to contain whatever the respective jar or var or supporting files are there right so that is when if you have such a requirement there are organizations where in a day we even create multiple builds for qa so that is when if you have a requirement of creating the images again and again we cannot keep doing it in a manual way so that is where we need to think how we can automate the process of image creation okay so that is one of the major requirement and the second thing is when you are trying to create the image we also need to make sure how can you fasten the steps because if i have 20 25 steps to do to create the image every time if i do it manually i have to go through all the steps from the beginning so instead of that we need an effective way which can help us to automate the image generation as well as which can help us in the time reduction of creating the image okay so that's when we have an automated way through a concept or a file called docker file okay so it's very simple now whatever that we did so far interactively or manually that is you created a container first that is the temporary container if you go back to this wherein the steps was we took the base image and then we created a container which is a temporary container and inside that we put all the instructions by running m update or m install vim or creating a file right and then we came out and we converted and created a image so this way instead of we doing several steps manually what we can do is we can take a file called docker file and in that you can pass all the instructions so this way if you ask the docker daemon to use this file and generate an image what the daemon will do is it will try to read all the instructions that you have given in this file read it line by line and then convert it into a image so that is how instead of you running all the steps you can just run this single file or you can ask the daemon to read this file take all the instructions and create a image in the background so that is when now for every image that you want to create ideally you will be having a file called docker file in which all the instructions will be specified okay so now we need to know how is that we are going to write this docker file and what is the way in which we are going to define all the instructions again it's not a programming which we need to learn it's just some kind of syntax okay now when i say docker file it is nothing but a simple text file so what will this contain so majorly it will contain what are the steps that you want docker to do on the background in which you are going to create the image so that way you have to tell everything that we did manually okay so what and all we did so in this if you see we did three major steps so first we told which base image to take and then what are the steps that you wanted to do inside the container and then come out and create an image by giving a name right all those things are what we are also going to give it here so this is where in the docker file whatever that you're going to give us a syntax will be in two columns okay so docker file is nothing but a text file which will be having two columns and all that you are going to give is contents of that two columns so when i say two columns what exactly is that 
So the first column, whatever that we are going to have, is what we call it as instructions. Okay. And the second column, what you are going to have is the commands. Or we can also call it as arguments. Okay. That is arguments for the instructions. Now, what do you mean by this instruction? Now, this is the key which will be doing a specific activity or which will tell or the docker knows what kind of activity that you want to do okay because if you look at here for example instead of you creating a temporary container by saying docker run there is one instruction where if you tell hey create a container then it will ask you some values if i want to create a container the main value that i want to know is what is the image that you want to take right so that way you need to give an instruction which will tell to create a container and then after you go inside a container you want to run some commands so equally for that there is an instruction which will tell us what is the command or the step that you want to run inside the container which docker is creating in the background same way if i say okay create a image so that way what is the name that you want to give so each and every step that you have done manually there is a keyword called instruction through which we are going to instruct the docker daemon how to create the image okay and remember the first column what you are going to give is called as instructions and the instruction will always be in caps followed by the arguments that you're going to give okay and whatever that you are giving will be line by line and the docker daemon will execute them step by step that is line by line okay so the very first instruction that we are going to see is from okay. So the meaning of from this, in order for creating the image, like how we created a temporary container, Dr. Demon will also create a temporary container. So if the demon has to create a temporary container, from what base image that it has to create? That is what this special instruction called. When you say from, the values or the command or arguments that you're going to give is the image name okay so as an example that if you take we'll have to just say in your docker file from and space because again it doesn't matter how many space you're giving because it's just a separation so just say from and space and to give the next now, in example of what I did yesterday, we used words, right? So now this is a line in Docker file which is going to tell the daemon to create a container in the background that is a temporary container, and that will be from CentOS. We'll start in a capital way. And followed by that, you will be having whatever the instructions that you want to pass. Hello, okay. Aram. I'm sorry to interrupt here. Now. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Aram, your voice seems to be breaking since uh, last know. minute. Is it for everybody or is it just me? No, it is for me as well. Alex, sure. I'm me yeah. Looks like some of the Singing words are missing. Out. I'll repeat it again. It's fine. So, thank you. What I was trying to tell is that I'm going to give will be line by line, and in that, the demon will try to take one step at a time, and it will be performing it. So that way, the very first instruction what you're going to give is called as from. 
wherein the value for the from will be the image name so when you give this instruction the docker daemon knows that okay you are asking the daemon to create a container that is a temporary container in a background and for creating that temporary container it will be using the centos image okay so that is how all the instructions you are going to give line by line and the very first instruction will be from which will tell like how you created a temporary container the daemon has to create this container based on the image called centos that is how you are giving the instruction now we have created a container or the docker daemon has created a container in the background what is the next thing we did we next went inside the container and in the container we were trying to run some steps right wherein you can see i ran some three steps that is yum update and installing vim and then creating a file so like that whatever instruction that you have wherein you have to go inside the container and you ran now who is creating this temporary container the daemon and we are not going to interact to that daemon or that container because it is running in the background so that is where we will tell as a instruction to the daemon what is that i want to run inside the container so if you wanted to run something inside the container that is where you are going to use a instruction called run for that and in this you are going to tell whatever the os command that you want to run so now what will happen anything that you give followed by the instruction called run the daemon will be executing it inside the temporary container that it has created using the image whatever you have okay so now if i want to compare with the example that we did yesterday what we did we did three steps so the equivalent of that when you write in a docker file will be run and the first one was m update now this is the first command now like this i ran multiple steps so then for every step that you wanted to run equally you will use run and you will say the commands accordingly okay so now this is how using run whatever that you wanted to do inside the container that you did manually now we are going to use the instruction called run okay again i'll repeat whatever that you wanted to run inside the container manually instead of that now the daemon has created a container in the background and we are not interacting to it so that is where we will give the instruction to the daemon by giving this keyword called run and we will give the command so now by end of this when you try to run this file first daemon will create a container based on centos in the background and first it will run the step and then it will run and then it will run and now when it finds that there is no more step available it will then go ahead and create it as a image okay so that's when before we go further how do i execute it which is what is the next important thing to know so Adam, if you have a point. yes uh, yeah when you have multiple run commands right say that um, some are mandatory and some are optional even if one of them fails will it fail the entire uh, image uh, execution exactly so there is no concept of if and else here every step is mandatory just like how we did manually so if one of the step fails then the image creation will just stop there okay thank you so we can use the docker client for that but we are going to use a option called build and as the option says we are instructing or we are telling the docker daemon to help us in building a image but for this you need to tell two things one is what is the name of the image you are going to give 
technically we call it as tagging because like how for every container there is a unique image or oh, sorry the unique container id for a image also there is a unique image id and a name okay so similarly when you are creating a image you are going to give the name of the tag to it that is you are tagging a name attach it to a particular image so you cannot change the image id but you can change the name of it so that's where iphone t stands for the image name or the tagging name okay and the next thing is what is the file in which you have the instructions so by default the name of the file will always be docker file with capital d and it's always a best practice that you keep the file in the current directory and if you keep it in the current directory and if you say dot then it represents that the context of whatever that you want to do with respect to a file called docker file is available in the current directory and whatever the reference as we move forward if the docker daemon has to do all the references will be taken from the current folder that is the meaning of dot so if you do not change the name of the file from the standard it will pick up now in case if you are changing the name of the file then you can say iphon f and this is the path of the file you can give it and okay so it's not mandatory to keep it on the same name you can keep it as any other name then you need to make sure that you are giving the path and you are giving the name of it okay so now with this now let's try to quickly see what we did yesterday okay so yesterday what we did was this so we just created a temporary container i'm sorry and using this we just instructed by running some steps and we created a image now equivalent for that we are going to create a file called docker file in which we are going to execute these as a instruction okay uh, even my net is flaky uh, just in case if uh, my voice is breaking uh, just uh, feel free to ping it okay now how do i execute so what i have to do now is let's go to the machine now i've already started the machine that we were using yesterday that's on an aws now again i always prefer ubuntu for all these things because you don't have to start the service separately now, as soon as you log in the services will be started okay which will make your life easy especially for demo like this so you can see i just started the machine and my docker daemon is already running anyway now quickly if i want to check the images you can see that these are the images that we downloaded and this is the image that we created manually correct so now we'll try to create our own image using docker file in an automated way so for this in my home directory i'm going to create a file called docker file and we'll put these instructions okay i think it's clear and uh, we'll save uh, again due to the network i think there might be one or two seconds delay for you guys to see that okay because i could see that it's little slow in displaying now if i want to run then you're going to see yeah docker build iphone t and now let me just say some name okay and dot so that it will try to pick up everything from the current folder and the context will be from the current folder and the default file name will be docker file okay so let's go ahead and run it you can see what it is doing now it's trying to take the first step by creating a temporary container okay and what happened it says written code okay what was the docker file we gave 
okay so it's asking us to give hyphen y so let me just change the docker file quickly okay so it won't ask us whether to enter s or no because you can see it's completely running on the background there is no user interaction so that's the reason it's getting aborted and again this, this was a question someone even asking whenever any step that fails a demon will stop the complete process so let's go ahead adam, and I run it a, adam i had another question so how do you actually give the version for that image do you specify in the same docker file or yes i'll come into it little later because once we okay. generate the image they'll move into that okay thank you so you can see <laughs> it's executing step by step wherein instead of we doing it manually it typically creating everything by itself in a background and the reason why i was saying this word called temporary container is because once the image is created you do not need this container so that is where if you look here what the demon is doing is it is trying to create a temporary container and it will just go ahead and remove all of them once the work is done so that way our interest is the image that we have created so you can see it is saying that it has created a image however there is something else after colon which i'll talk about it later okay but just make a note of it so if you say docker images so now you can see there is a image id that has been generated as well as the name what you have given which is nothing but a tag okay and just to cross check this let's quickly say docker run hyphen it and then i can say the name of our image okay and whatever the first command that i want to give so here if you say yum update everything is up to date and then if i go ahead and say the file called dummy you can say it's available and the vim editor will also be available okay it's working so that's how quickly rather than we doing all the steps manually you can automate it so now what i can do depending on my need i can just go ahead and create a file called docker file and run it as part of any of my build process so that after i generate my build artifact like a jar or a var i can generate the image by just executing this docker build command by passing the specific file okay so Adam, I this is question. the basic uh, can we put the uh, yes. same name for two different images yeah i'll come into it as we go i'll cover all those things just give me a couple of minutes so that all the questions that you have i'll be covering them okay, okay thanks. and please make a note in case if there is something that has not been covered i'll be happy to discuss at the end okay so now if you note creating a image is not just that you tell a base image and then run some steps because there are a lot of other things that we have to do one of the thing that if you note for every image i've been telling that there is a default first command if a user doesn't tell it used to run so that way for centos or ubuntu who told that you need to take bin bash as default or when you try to create a container from nginx or apache who told that to run specific application like nginx or apache in it so that way how do you tell that so again all those things are through this docker file only so that is where now there is a special instruction called cmd okay so cmd stands for what is the first default command that you want to be executed when the image is sorry when 
the user is creating the container using your image so whatever the image that we are creating using this if a user is trying to run and create a container if he doesn't give any default command then what is the default command that you want so that's what cmd is all about okay so i'll say the default first command okay so now here if you see when i say default command when a user doesn't pass any first command then whatever that you have set as an instruction using cmd will be taken into consideration but if the user passes some command then it will overwrite that is it will not take the default it will run what the user has given okay so in cmd if the user doesn't give anything then it will be taking the default but if the user passes something then it will overwrite the default and it will always give the preference to what the user has given so now go ahead in this i can give cmd but when you're trying to give an instruction you always have to actually give using a square bracket and now in real time if you understand you're going to give some command so the way that how the cmd works is you need to give it in the square bracket and each and every argument that you're going to pass should be actually in a space and a comma separated values which means now for example i'm just trying to tell you the actual instruction will be like this whatever that you are going to give will be basically using square brackets and in that you are going to first give the executable and then comma what are the arguments that you want to pass okay that is separated by comma now the meaning of this if you take any command that you're running now for example if i say i want to run bin bash then i would be saying as bin bash okay now if you take nginx and if you take apache they will run a different command right for example if i want to run a shell script or i want to run a python script then my cmd will be somewhat like this so the executable for you if it is a shell then you will say sh and then what is the name of the script so let's say the name of your script is strat.sh okay or you want to you're going to say your executable is python and followed by whatever is your first command. so that way you need to specify the executable and then followed by that whatever the arguments that you're going to okay so that way now this is how you're going to give and in fact if you take centos or ubuntu image this is what they would have done where they would have given the cmd and followed by the argument or the value which is bin bash okay so now let's try to see the same so if we are creating our own image and in that image if i want to make sure bin bash is set by default then what we are going to do now is you are going to give cmd and bin bash so that's up to us to choose so this is where it could be a simple command like this or it could be a script okay so now if i go ahead and just there are few things that you need to note here okay adam your voice is breaking so when you execute yes i think there might be net but again uh, please check and let me know if it's for everyone or it's only for few okay yeah, i think it's for me also yeah for everyone everybody ma'am madam yeah me too in between it breaks but however uh, again uh, it's a little normal 
I think it has consistently happened two, three times, maybe. Yeah. This conference will now be recorded. Again, I'll request everyone to go on mute, please. So, if you look at it, the first point is the time that we first ran it, it was trying to run all the steps, but now if you see, it hardly took us fraction of second to generate the image. This is because when you execute a image creation by Docker file, every step that you are running is actually stored as a layer, okay? And that will be available in the, your where lib Docker. Like how I was showing you in the last session where all the contents of your container are being stored and volumes are stored in the same way, every layer that you are generating on your machine is actually getting stored in where lib docker images so that is where when the docker daemon tries to execute an instruction if there is a layer which is already available it will be reusing the cache that is where image creation will be super fast because instead of me doing the yum update and yum install you can see it just took up the layer which is already available so that's where even though you have multiple steps, you don't have to execute again and again and waste time. The Docker file will help you to fasten the steps. Okay, so that is one of the advantage that we are going to get using Docker file. Okay, so remember that. And the other point that I wanted to tell you was, it's the same name of the tag that you have given. So what it means is, it is actually trying to create a new layer by taking the changes what you have done because it's like a sandwich okay so we had an image previously with some four steps now in that i am just replacing one of the fifth step and i am applying the tag name so what will happen the name of this or the tag name or the image name will be applied to the latest layer what you have so which means that you are kind of overwriting your image with the new layer added to it okay so that's when we need to know about something called as image naming that i will get it little later but for now what you need to know is whenever you try to give you are basically overwriting the same image again and again okay now here if you go ahead and say dog images that's where you can see it's the same tag name which is being getting updated but the image id will be different because it's a collection of different layers but it reused all the layers from the cache which is why it will be super fast okay and now so Adam, if i try to execute uh, a new layer will be created every instruction is going to create a new layer okay So if I say docker run and zero, if I do not pass any instruction, then you can see the default, what it is going to take is bin bash, which is what I had given in the CMD. However, if I want to replace, then I can give any other command that I want. For example, if I say sh, then it's going to take that. So that's where if you do not pass anything, then whatever the default that you have given will be taken okay so that's where the user can execute depending on his need okay now you can see i just gave echo high so instead of taking bin bash it's trying to run echo high wherein it will just print high and it is just coming out of it because there is nothing else running in it okay clear so cmd means if you do not give any first command while you are creating the container, what should be the default one that it has to take? Now, this, uh, this class, the video is going up, means recorded. Yes, yes, it's been. Okay. Okay. So, here, Adam, one question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, where we can see the log when creating these uh, layers? 
because if you, we are running in a night job run so that time nobody will be available and after that morning we want to see what happened to that job creation so where you can see okay. so there are no straightforward way to take a log so basically if you execute docker build you can see that it is giving you some output so that is where with respect to your regular build you will be redirecting all the logs so that way if i have my command and if i want to redirect the complete output then you are just going with your native linux where you just have to say redirect and to a log so that way whatever that it is trying to put on the screen or the console output it is going to redirect to a file in case if you are trying to call this itself from another script then the complete output of the script should be redirected to a log file that is the only way okay okay docker log will be uh, there will be no de details docker log no you will be having but you will not have everything in such because if you are kind of running it again and again it might overwrite so it's a best practice wherein you can go ahead and redirect the complete console output to a log file that's where like if you are running it as a build for every build you are going to redirect it as a build output or a build log so along with this you can also take this output and refer okay understandable thank you and adam i have one more question if, if if it is using the same image in the previous layer so it's like a soft copy to the previous image yes it's going to be stored in the cache of your current machine every time it has to create it's going to reuse that from the cache and create it because image is not just one layer it's a collection of multiple layers so that's where it will collect based on whatever the steps you are given and it is going to generate it as one final image and attach a name to it with respect to what tag name that you have given okay now there is another instruction called entry point okay now first thing this is also exactly similar to cmd okay which is if you give something as a entry point then if the user doesn't give any command then whatever that you have given will be the first command to execute which is exactly like cmd then what is the need of it that is where there will be some times in which you do not want user to pass his command which should be overwriting instead you want user to pass some arguments to the default command because let's assume now you are trying to start apache now i don't know how to start apache just an assumption then i need to find out how the image is created where the file is available or the application library is available and accordingly i have to run so instead of that if my requirement is let the default command run but i need to pass some argument to it right because whenever you are starting an application sometimes if you don't give anything default will run but now based on the user requirement you might have to pass some arguments now let's say that you are trying to start a java application by default whatever the instructions you are giving it will run now for my specific test let's say that instead of taking the default jmx of 1 gb now let's say that for my testing i want to take 2 gb as my jvm that is the heap size that i want to specify so like that i want to still run the default command which i don't know what is it but i just want to pass some arguments of my option so that is where you are going to use entry point okay so the difference is both of them is same when the user doesn't give a value when a user doesn't give a value whatever you have given here is what it is going to execute but in a cmd when you pass a first command it will be overwriting this but in entry point if you pass any command or option it is not going to be taking as a option but it will be taking it 
as an additional argument to your default. So that now, in this example, let's say if I say Docker run hyphen it and our image. Now here, if I say bin batch as example, now if it was CMD, whatever that you have given will be overridden, right? Instead of this, it will be running it. But now, in entry point, if you give some instruction or if you try to run some first command, then whatever is available along to it, it will take that whatever that you are giving is the argument to it. Okay, so that is where when you are running some real time, you might give some arguments that you want here. Okay, so if you give your argument, then it will be appending it to the existing one. So that's where you need to understand whether you want the user to allow to run his own command, or there are some cases where you say, I don't want the user to run any other command. If you create a container from this image, there should be a default command, then that is the only command it should execute. However, the user can have the ability to pass some arguments. Okay, so this way, now to demonstrate it, what I'm going to do quickly is now the same instructions, whatever we took, instead of using that bin bash for a change. I will just take a different command that is echo command. I'll show you what is that because since we don't have any application with us, right? It might be a little confusing for you. So to take it in a simple way, first I'll take entry point. Okay, and then I Okay. Adam, your voice is breaking. It's too much, Adam. It's breaking too much. Yeah. Is it for everyone again? Yes. Yes, Adam. Yes, Adam. Adam. I think we are facing yes, the same. Adam. Ah, this is conference very will now be recorded. Okay, I'm just starting it again. So. Just to give again a quick uh, difference uh, because of network issues, those who didn't hear. See, the basic workflow for CMD and entry point is when a user doesn't give a command, then the default command will be executed. When you have given CMD and user has passing some command, then what will happen is, the default command will be overwritten by the command which is given by the user, that is CMD. But in the entry point, if a user passes some command, then it will not be overwriting whatever the default is available. So what the Docker will do is, in addition to the default, whatever the user has passed, it will be passing it as an argument. So this is where if you have a requirement in which the user is creating a container and he wants to pass an argument to the default command, then you are going to use it as a entry point, okay? So if you want to completely replace the default with what the user is giving, then use CMD. But if you want to pass some arguments to the default command, if you give it CMD, I don't know what is given, right? Because whatever I give will be overwritten. But if I want to make sure, no matter what, my default command should execute, but I should be able to pass some arguments to it, then you have to give it as entry point. Then what will happen? Whatever that the user is passing will not be taken as a replacement, but in the entry point, it will be added as an argument. Okay, so that's the simple difference. CMD will overwrite what user has given, whereas in the entry point, whatever the user is giving will not be overwritten, but it will be added as a argument to the default command. So which means in entry point, 
the default command is the one which will always be getting executed but you have the option of either running everything by default or you can pass your arguments of interest which will be added to the existing command okay so that's the basic difference so in cmd we saw so far if i give bin bash it will run that if i say bin sh it will run that if i say echo command it will overwrite the default one now let us see how the entry point works So in this example, what I'm trying to give is entry point, and this is my command. So by default, if the user doesn't give any command, then the default command it has to execute is hi Adam, all right? So first, let's go ahead and build it. Docker build t image zero zero. Yeah, it created. Now just to show you, watch this. If I say docker run hyphen it and then image zero zero, if I do not give anything, then it should always take the default command, right? So what is the default command? That is echo. So you can see it is executing. Now, if it was the CMD, then anything that I give here will actually overwrite what i have given as the default correct that was in cmd but when i now run entry point whatever is there as a default it will still run but in addition to what it is running it will take this as an argument you can see so what is happening now whatever i give is being taken as a argument so what is the default command i'm running here i am running the default command as echo hi adam and along with that whatever you have given is taken as the additional argument to the default command so this is what is actually getting executed so when you run this is what is the expected output so this is how if there is an image when you are creating container you want to pass some argument to your application which is running inside then you are going to create it as a entry point but if you want to overwrite with your own command whatever that you are giving then you will be giving it as cmd so that's the only difference cmd will overwrite whatever user has given whereas entry point will add it to the existing default command okay got that yes. so can we give multiple entry points you can give but logically it is going to take the last one which is available so it's always better that you can have one entry point at a time okay okay Okay. Adam, can you please uh, give uh, another uh, example or use case scenario of uh, CMD and entry point? Okay, that's what I told you a Java application. Let's assume my default command. Okay, now let's say that I'm running a shell script like this. Let's take this. Now, if I give it a CMD, what will happen? It will by default run the SH only. Okay then in case if i want to pass some argument to this so let's assume for this script i want to pass one argument so what i want to run in real time is inside my container i want to run something like this and let's say i want to pass some argument now if i have created the image as cmd and in case if i pass this like this then what will happen is it will be overwriting the default and it will try to run only this as a command so it will be trying to run this as a command which is not correct so now my requirement is i don't want to overwrite the default i still want to run the default but to the default i want to add a additional argument so that is where instead of giving it as cmd if you make it as entry point here then no matter what 
whether you are passing some value or you are not passing it will still run the default but if you pass something as an argument then instead of doing this way as overwriting it will run the default plus whatever that you are passing so this way i can pass as many arguments that i want and everything will be added over here so this is where you need to know what kind of application you are running and for that should the user replace his command or should user has the ability to pass some arguments to it okay so that is so in other in other words uh, what i understand is command is used to mention the default command whatever you want to run and whatever you mention there it will be overwritten whereas in entry point whatever you execute there or mention that will be appended including the default command that is executed in cmd yes okay so okay only cmd only one time we can use it right in the code yes okay. it's always that it is used for container creation okay so when you are creating the container guys can mute a lot of this when you try to create a container at that point of time you are going to use this okay and the other thing that you need to note is when i was creating the first image in which i have not given the cmd then even at that case the bin bash was working that is because when you are trying to take one base image even in this base image someone has given cmd right so actually go back and try to understand whoever created the centos they would have also used some docker file and they would have given some cm uh, cmds bin bash so that is where now whatever the layers which is already available will also come into the picture for your current image so that is where in my image if i do not give the instruction then what will happen is it will try to take from the base image so whatever the layer is available there it is just going to take that also into picture so that is how you need to know which image you are taking what are the layers that it already has based on the need you can go ahead and create your own image but if you try to use an additional option then instead of taking whatever is already available it will be taking your instruction which is the latest instruction okay fine yes by looking at a image you cannot say whether you have given entry point or cmd okay so the only way to test this is if you try to create a container if you try to pass some command if it is allowing you to overwrite that with what you have given then you can consider that they have used cmd but if you are trying to run something and it is not allowing it okay then it means that it has been considered using entry point okay so that is where you need to know and the user has to tell i would request again guys please go on mute okay again keep your questions i'll come back one by one okay now here this is for the container creation and the first command for your container similarly now what happens is there are many other instructions available okay now let's assume when you are trying to create a container you want some environment variable to be available by default okay like if i am trying to start apache or i am trying to start nginx i want some environment variable to be already available in my container so that is where now what you need to understand is whatever that environment variable that you want that should be available in your image you are going to put it inside the container so now we are going to use a special instruction and tell to create a environment variable in such a way that it will be getting stored in the image so using this image if a user is trying to create a container inside the container that environment variables will also 
come okay so that instruction is what we call it as env and again i'm repeating it if you want a environment variable to be set inside this image so that when the user is creating the container inside the container the environment variable will be automatically available so if you have such a requirement okay then there is a lot of environments now in that we will be using a special environment instruction okay so for that we will be using env and for this you are going to tell the variable name and followed by value okay now this is how you are going to give and again you can give multiple environment variables as per the need now just as an example you are going to say env now let's say that you are trying to run a java program or a java application inside your container you want to set java home for that then what you can do you can just say java home and then the location where you have installed java for example let's say i have installed java under some folder like this okay so now when a user is creating this container by default there will be environment variable set okay now let's try to see this oh my bad Just to save time, I'm not going to give all those things. So, so what is happening now? I'm going to set an environment variable. Now I can set as many environment variables I want, but everything is going to be a separate instruction. Okay. So now let's go ahead and build the image. So once again, it's going to use the layers which is available in the cache and now watch this if i say docker run hyphen it and i can say image 00, zero bin bash so here if you look i have not given the cmd but still it will be able to pick it up because whatever the cmd is available in the centos it will be able to take in case if i have not given it okay now if I want to see the environment variable, I can just go ahead and say dollar Java home. Okay. And so this is how when you want to start an application automatically, right? As part of your default command, then if it needs an environment variable, you can set it by using env. Okay. So that's the major use case so that the user doesn't have to set anything because if he doesn't give any default command whatever the default command you have given while creating the image will be taken and for that whatever the environment variable it needs it is going to take accordingly okay now this is for environment variable now same way now let's get into something else deeper so yesterday if you understand i was trying to tell you that whenever you are creating a container did you actually note as what user you are creating because right now if you see i am as a user called root okay so that way how did it create it as root now this is where there are two things that you need to note again now what are those two things okay now yes you can also use env command it is also going to work because if i say env there's going to be a whole bunch of environment variable just to show you i'm using this simple way now if you understand this what is this docker run command that you have given so basically it is a process which is running on your host machine so that way now who created this process basically we ran it as root so that is where it is trying to create 
the container also as root okay so that is one of the point but at the same time what happens every time when you try to create a container you can set as what user you want to run inside it okay so that is when you have the option of choosing the user but you need to make sure that the user whatever that you want to use should be available on that file system of the image that you are taking see it's just like how you connected to the machine and you switch user right the same way if i go back to the basics here when we try to create our image on the background there was a temporary container created so as what user you were running all the instructions so far so that was the default user which is root because we are trying to execute everything as root but however we can choose to switch a different user to run all the instructions that we wanted to run okay so remember that so how do you change that so that's when if you have a different user as whom you want to run everything then you can say user and then you can go ahead and say the user name okay now when you take the basic centos right you will not be having all the users then you have to create now just to show you this let's go to the etc password and see what are the users which are available okay now there is a dummy user called nobody so i'll just take this to show you okay now watch this what i'm going to do i'll open my docker file okay now here watch this if so far whatever that we did as a run instruction it was executing it as root user so that is where the yum update or yum install was actually running now if i say user okay and if i say nobody anything after this that i am trying to execute as a instruction will be executed as the user called nobody okay to show you this watch what i am trying to do i will say run and i will say touch a file okay and see just to show you i'll say yum update hyphen So now what happens when the image is getting generated inside the temporary container based on centos when it is running the user called nobody this command will execute successfully but when it is trying to run this it will fail because the user called nobody doesn't have the access to execute the packaging manager okay so uh, like adam so just before executing the yum instruction can we change the user so that for a few yes. commands we can have one user and yeah i'll cover that also okay sure okay so you can see it's saying that only the root user can be executed that means you have the ability to run but how did it work so far for us so far it worked for us because we were creating the temporary container as a root or we didn't create we executed the command called docker build and the docker build created a container so that way who executed the docker build as root and then that created the temporary container so that is where you were going inside as root by default so now if i go back and modify this okay so now okay looks like it got user nobody and let's say run touch temp dummy okay let's remove that swap file dot okay 
so what i have done so i've just created so now let's go ahead and create the image and see how it is going to be there docker build img okay and now if i say docker run iphone it img now here if you quickly look i am not giving any default cmd instruction so whatever is available in the previous image as a layer will be added to it so that is where here also my default command is still bin bash because it is coming from centos okay and then to show you this particular point now if you go to temp folder you will see the file was created as nobody okay so this is where you can choose as what user you are trying to run but there is another point to know if you watch very carefully it is not just for the temporary container because whatever that you do in the temporary container is getting stored exactly as a image so that is where in the image also the default user is been getting stored as nobody so that is where using this image when i create my container the same default user is also coming to my container which is nobody so that is where remember if you set something as a user here after this any instruction that it is going to run will be based on that and whatever is available in the container at that point of time will be getting converted as a image and whatever is available in the image will also come inside your container okay so this is how you can choose to set a user but it's not mandatory that you should always use the default just like how you log into a machine and you switch the same way what you can now do is using the same image i can switch as a different user so that's when you will use a command called iphen u for example if i say root you can see the only difference is you have went inside the container as root but whatever is available in the image it's still going to be the same you are not changing anything just like how you switch the user during your run time here you are using the same image but you are going inside your container as the interested user that you want using this option so this is how you can choose the user but again as we were talking it's not that it's just one user i can switch between as different users okay so if i want again i can give a user instruction and i can say which user you want and then i can run whatever i want after that okay so now if i give the same here now what will happen first it will switch the user and then it will run this instruction again you are telling a user called root then it will switch and then run and now in the image what will be the user which is getting stored root because this is the last user available in your container which will be set as the default user in your image also okay so now watch this now let's go ahead and create a container out of this so you can see you're coming in as root and at the same time if you go back the dummy file was created as nobody whereas the dummy new was created as root so this is how you can choose as what user you want the instructions to be available and accordingly whatever is available in your container is what is going to get reflected as a image okay adam uh, uh, sorry to interrupt can you do a who am i now the last user that is mentioned in docker file that user is what it remains at the end right yes here you can see this this is root okay all right thank you okay 
Now, we were seeing that, okay, uh, just a request, uh, I think a couple of people who wanted to leave at nine o'clock, so, and the plenty of things to cover. I would like to request again, everyone to please make a note of your doubts so that I'll give enough time after this so that anything that you have as a discussion, we can do it. If not, you have the WhatsApp group, please ping into that. We can discuss, but now considering the time and for everyone's request, I'm just going ahead. So please hold on your questions or doubts for some time. Okay. So now what we saw is how do you go as a user? Now the same way, now if you come back, for every user, there will be something called as a home directory, right? So that when you are trying to go inside a container, you are going to specifically go in a folder. So in the beginning, when we were doing a container management, I told you that you can pass an option called iPhone W. The same way, when you created a container and when you are going inside it as a root, all the instructions that you were running were executing as root but from which folder so it was executing it from the root folder so that is where depending on your need you can switch the folder also so if you want to do that then there will be a new instruction that you're going to give which is called as work dir and you're going to give a path just like user any instruction that you're going to give after the work dir will be executed from that and not just that whatever the last directory that you are working in your temporary container will be the default directory for the image so that way when the user creates the container the default folder from the image will be coming into the picture okay so to understand this okay so let me go back to my docker file so here just to show you okay now i'll do the same thing so what i'll do first now is you can see i'm not telling anything so by default we are as root and as root you will be creating the file so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just create the file called dummy so now this file will be getting executed as a user called root and the default folder will be the root that is the slash now what i will do here is i will set work dir okay and i will say temp and then if i try to run this what will happen because when you say touch and a file it will always create in the current folder so what is the current folder current folder will be temp okay so that way all the instructions after work dir will be executed from temp but if i need i can switch this again by giving another work dir okay now just to show you i'll just say atc okay just an example now what will happen to run this it switched the user sorry it switched the folder to temp it will run this and again it will run but there is no more instructions so the last command is this. So now in your default container, when you are trying to create, the default folder will be etc. Okay, so let's try to see how it works. So let's say docker build hyphen t image. Okay, now watch this docker run icon it image zero zero okay so first you're going in as root because we didn't change anything but first check this the default folder that you are in is etc because it came from the last instruction of your docker file and now if you go to root folder which was the home directory of the user that is root so that's where you can see the dummy file was executed there and if you now look at the temp you can see the dummy new was created there okay so this is where you can see that anything that you're executing was in the default home directory of the user as whom you are running however 
you can switch the folder between it so that's when when you are trying to write a docker file you need to understand what are the steps you want to do from where you want to run and based on that you will be able to switch between them okay again it's all about different options that you have but you need to know and decide what are the steps you want to give and where you want to give okay so the meaning of work dir again is to specify inside the container that is the temporary container from which folder do you want to execute all the instructions below that okay so that's what the whole point of work dir again you can switch it during your container creation because now when i create a container by default it will go to temp but during runtime you can change that also by saying w and folder so this way you are again not changing any of the default content of your image but the only difference is you are just changing only the initial folder from where you want to begin that is instead of etc i am trying to tell that i need to work under temp but however the content of your image is the same so the container will also have the same content so there is no difference in that so this is how you can choose during your container creation because if you go back this is what we were learning in our container management in the first session okay so we saw work dir user env now same way now let's take another scenario now let's assume i have a application which i am installing but i have some configuration files which i have to modify so now you need to understand we are not going inside this container in an interactive way so that i can modify a file right because this itself is running in the background and there is no user interaction so this is when if there is a requirement where you want to install some application and then modify some files or modify some configuration that is needed then how is that you are going to do because i cannot edit any file or i cannot run the vi editor and modify when it is executing it in background so that way what we can do is we can generate whatever the configuration file that we need and we can keep it outside and when the container is getting created and the instructions are executed we can copy some file from host machine inside the container okay so that's when what we can now do is we have a special instruction for that where when you are creating a container if you want to copy a file inside it you can use that so that what happens whatever the file that we are trying to copy will come into the temporary container and anything that is available in the temporary container will also come inside the image okay so that is where if you want a file to be available inside the image by default for a user then you need to copy it to the temporary container so for that you are going to use the instruction called copy okay so for the copy you are going to give the source so the source is nothing but your host path that you have okay and followed by the destination wherein the destination is nothing but where exactly in the container it needs to be available okay now this is where whatever the file that you are trying to give will be one file at a time and the reference of this file will be taken from the current directory okay because we know that when we specify a path we have an absolute path and a relative path right so whatever the path that you are giving will be a relative path to the current folder that you have given in the dot so the meaning of what i'm trying to tell here is if i say copy some file to temp file it will search for a file in your current directory because you have given the context as dot so 
it will check for the current directory from where you are executing the docker file from there it will try to see whether this file is available and then it will copy this file to the container under the temp okay so that is where we say this context so to understand let's try this quickly now here i am on my host machine okay so what we will do that i'll try to create a file okay so i'll just say echo april 14 and i'll just create a file called okay uh, class okay i'm just creating a dummy file called class so let's go ahead and write a docker file to copy this now i don't want all this for a time so i'll just say the so name Adam, of the is that the work directory it will copy from the work directory as a context right yes okay work okay. directory is different try to understand work directory is inside the container you are trying to tell where to put and what are the instruction that you need to run the context what i am taking is when you have to refer the source that is the host machine in there where you are referring so everything will be in my current okay okay so for example now if i want to copy this file under temp now either i can say temp and class if not if i just say it as class where will it copy it will be copying under the root so instead if i say work dir and temp then by default it will switch to temp and whatever that you are copying will be under the temp okay so that is the whole point of that okay so now if i go ahead and say docker build hyphen t image zero zero okay and dot so this is where i am saying whatever the source that the host has to refer it should be from the current folder okay and now no if to you specify the uh, current directory of the uh, host sorry repeat it no need to specify any current directory of host host mission because we yes. just mentioned as a class but nowhere mentioned that where the class is available and uh, we yeah, are running so the default, commands from the root of the uh, yeah that is, what, that is what i'm trying to tell you everything is the context of the current directory so it will search for a file called class in my current directory that is from where i am trying to run okay so that is what you are trying to give here and the reference is also current folder So you can see now my work dir is set the same reason the class file is also available okay so this is how the context you are trying to set is through this so that whatever the file you are giving it is going to refer for that in the current directory and it will pick it up the same way you can tell where to copy if you do not tell again where is the current folder inside your container that is what you have decided if you don't give this then it will be going into the default route which is what it will be taking it up so it's all up to us to decide how is that you are going to customize okay so this way at any point of time you can copy a file from one file in your current host and you will be able to copy it to the destination okay so this is where before i install and run my application we need to make sure that whatever the configuration file that we have we are going to keep it ready and when you run your docker file it will also copy this then you can try to put some instruction which will install some application and keep it ready okay adam one quick question in the copy command can we give absolute path instead of giving virtual delete path you can give but it will not work because sometimes the context what you are telling is always going to be on the current so it will always take from the context what you are giving here okay okay
and we're running out of time so again please hold on to your questions i'll come back to it now what happens when i have multiple files okay now i have some 10 files to copy or i have multiple files and folders that i have then it is not going to be easy if i give multiple copy commands so that is where what we need to know is there is another instruction called add which is exactly similar to copy but the difference here is when you are giving add if you give a single file it will copy to the destination instead if you give a file which is a archive archive means like a zip file or a tar file that is what we call it as archive then what the docker daemon will do is instead of copying this and extracting in two steps directly it will extract the co content of your archive into the destination folder okay that means now i can simply say add okay and i can say some file like tar and if i say temp whatever the content of this tar file it is going to directly extract it to temp so that is where it will be useful for you when you have more than one files that you want to copy however to the add if you give a single file it is going to work exactly like copy okay so there is no difference in it so let's see that example now to do that example what i will do i will try to take all this content and i will create it as a tar so quickly i will say tar hyphen cvf test dot tar star which means now i have created a tar with all this content just for our sample so now let's try to copy this itself to our container so instead of this if i say add test dot tar again this will be taken from our current directory related to where you are executing and then i want to put everything into temp so watch what happens so we'll say docker build iphone t image zero zero and now if i just say docker run iphone it and image zero zero so if you go to temp you can see it simply extracts everything so that's when whatever the instructions that you want to give that you have multiple files to copy rather than copying it using the copy instruction you can just make use of add so that it can directly extract it together okay so that will further simplify your work so remember when you have a single file go ahead and freely use copy but when you have multiple files it's good that you can go ahead and create it as an instruction or an archive and give that archive as a add so that add will try to extract wherein internally it will be copying extracting and deleting the archive okay so that is where you will be having add okay, so add it will work for copy. directory as well no? sorry it will work for copy and add command will work for the directory as well you will not you can try it it will never copy that's the reason i'm saying go ahead and use add create it as an archive and then copy it so adam the copy instruction can use wildcards right yes okay it will take yeah it's a good question it depends if you just give for example uh star then it will try to take or even for here also i can just say something like star dot tar then all the files which is ending with tar which will just try to copy and extract that will support okay so we had uh, from run cmd entry point uh, okay let me just quickly check if there's anything that i wanted to give user copy okay i think the only thing remaining is uh, so now when you go back when i was talking about port mapping if you recall i told you that there are two steps to do a port mapping so the first one is exposing 
the other one is mapping so in fact i told you this also that the expose should come from the image so this is where when you want to create a container and you want to tell that hyphen p and use some container sport by default you will not be able to get the image should have told to the container to expose so that is where the expose should be done from the image for which you are going to say expose and then you are going to give a port number here okay so what happens now ideally when you are generating the image it is going to store this port number so that when a container is getting created from this image automatically it will be exposing wherein using the hyphen p in the beginning which we saw what you are trying to tell us you are not trying to expose here this is just telling the reference for your mapping okay remember this is not exposing whatever the port number that has been exposed that you are telling take it as a reference and map it to your host machines port okay so that way whenever you are creating an image you are going to typically give it as expose because when will this come into the picture it will get stored as a port inside the image only when the user is trying to create a container and when the application is trying to run then the port whatever that you are going to expose will be available for the host machine to understand then if you have used iphone p and mapped it will be using if not on the host machine you will not be able to see directly so remember the expose should be done from the host machine okay now for that to know on the host machine you need to first say this expose from the image and then while creating the container you are going to map using the hyphen p okay these are the main instructions that you will be having okay now just for understanding and in phase you know in your real time or interview point there is another one like env okay so there is another one called arc okay now this is again exactly similar to variable okay however there is a slight difference is try to understand it carefully what i'm trying to tell if you have a requirement wherein you want to set the environment in uh, you know variable on the final image then you are going to use env okay because anything that you set as env we saw it will be coming to the final image but let us take some activity where in order to generate this i have to do some instructions right but for running some instructions here if there is a environment variable that you want to set which should be available only inside the container and not in the image then you are going to use it as arg i'll repeat what is it if you set a environment variable using arc in this fashion what will happen that environment variable will be available only in the container so when you create a image that will not come because for running some command if i want to create a environment variable then i will be using arc and that will be available only in the container so when you create a image in that image those environment variable will not be there because using arg if you are creating a environment variable it is used only to be available in the temporary container and not to be on your actual image so that's the difference so sometimes you might see that there are some docker files in which arg is used so arg means create a environment variable and keep it only in the container that is the temporary container however it will not come to the image but so adam what is the use of i'm sorry uh, can you just please wait for a few minutes i'm uh, just about to finish couple of things i'll pick up your questions okay so again 
the basic difference is if you want to create a environment variable only for executing the steps then use arg so that it will be available only in the temporary container but if you want something to be available inside the final image then go ahead and set it up as env okay so env is for final image and arg is for environment variable only within your temporary container okay so these are some of the you know major instructions that you will be using on a day to day so what's the whole point of learning this is now if you have to create an image then what you need to first understand is okay what is my final image is going to look like and for getting all these layers you need to know if you are creating it manually what are the instructions that you are going to do manually so based on that you need to put a outline okay so like how i was explaining you so you need to put the outline and from that outline you are going to convert it by putting it as instructions okay now to have my image i want to have a specific base image then you need to put the instruction all right now after that these are the instructions which i am going to run in sequence then based on that you are going to set it up by executing but before running a instruction if you want to know whether you need a environment variable for executing this then set arg before this or if you want to set a environment variable in the image then you are going to use env and before that if you want to decide as what user you are going to run this and from which folder you are going to run so based on that you are going to set the user and work tar but for running some instruction if you need a file to copy or copy a file for the image then you are going to use copy and add and then you are going to give all your instruction and post your instruction now you need to tell if there is a web application that you are trying to use it for the image and then expose your respective port numbers and followed by that what will be the default command that you want the user to run so that depending on your need you will be able to give cmd and entry point okay so that's the whole way on how you are going to give now just to show you a quick example for that okay now i'm going to use a simple docker file where i'm just telling you how i can have my own setup for apache okay so in this instruction if you are watching it carefully now it's just a simple instruction where i'm trying to specify a image and then now this is a keyword which will be like a author see any time you are trying to write some book you are going to give a author right so that way for maintenance purpose if someone wants to know who is the person who is creating and maintaining you can have a maintainer okay other than that it doesn't have any value even if you don't give it's good then here what is that i am doing now one of the problem that you have with image generation is when you have multiple layers the size of the image will be high so that is where you need to see how effectively you can run and combine multiple commands so that is where instead of running it as several run command so in fact let me copy this to my notepad so that it will be easy so so you can see now instead of me executing it like this run so now every layer that it is going to run is going to add space for you in the image so instead of running it separately in linux i can execute multiple commands together so that's where i'm using ampersandage so that all of them will be executed one by one but as using one single process okay so i'm trying to do an apt update because i'm using ubuntu and then i'm installing apache and i'm just trying to clean up some folders and then i'm trying to set some environment variable which is needed for running apache and i'm creating a lock folder and you can see it's exposing a port 80 because apache will be on port 80 and followed by that what is the first command that i want to run 
so that apache already or apache comes by default so that is where this is the command where i'm running apache in background so if the user doesn't give anything then this command will be executed and apache inside my container will be running however if i want i can allow the user to use his own command then i have to use the cmd okay so let me run this and show you now this is where what i can do is i can have a different file name so it's not mandatory that i should be having the same docker file so now in this case i already have a docker file so let's go ahead and create a file called docker file apache now how are you going to run this so that's where you need to use the iphone f so i will say docker build and then after the build we are going to say iphone t and whatever the name so now i will say apache img it's just the name i am giving and now iphone f and your file is in the current folder so the reference of that okay so this is where i'm trying to tell that the file is in my current folder and this is the context for whatever you are doing it to refer to your current folder so you can see now it is trying to take this image and obviously even for creating a temporary container it's the same logic where you do not have the image it's trying to download the image and from there it is trying to pick it up okay it's completed and now if you just say docker images you're going to see that there is a particular image that has been created okay now if i want to run this then again i have an application and i'm not interested to go inside so this is where i can say docker run whatever the name that you want to give so let's call it as my apache okay and then i want to run it on a detached mode and then i have a port number that i want to map so i will say 8080 and then what is the name of the image so it was apache img and again if you have any other options that you can use it now i don't have to give any startup command so that by default it will be taking whatever we have given in the cmd okay so go ahead and run and watch what is happening so it's already started running and if i want to see the logs and i can just say docker logs iphone f and the name of our container okay it's still trying to start but however you can quickly again cross check using this okay so it's running again i can now just say curl localhost so you can see it is working it's the same thing if i want to cross check i can go to this machine take the details of the server and i can just try it here okay there you go okay so this is how in real time what will be happening is you need to first understand what is that you're going to put inside your image so this could be your own organization's application so that way what you're going to do is typically create a docker file with the outline what you want and run all the instructions so that every time that now you run it is going to generate a image for you okay so this is the whole process of image creation but in this what to put what is the image that you have to take everything is up to us to define so that's where we will be able to customize our own image okay now 
No. Okay. So we are talking about image. Okay. Now, like your Git, when you try to do a commit, everything is getting stored in your local repository. The same way, all the images that we are trying to create is typically stored in our host machine. That is under Verlib Docker. Now, if I want to share it with someone else, this is where you need to know that what is the registry that you guys are using. Okay. But before going into it, when you try to specify a image, now the name of the image is not just like what you are trying to give, but typically, now if you understand, whenever you are telling to tell a name, it's actually the image tag that is the image name followed by the tag okay so what do you mean by tag here so as we saw in the class today every time when i use the same name it is kind of overwriting so what happens is in real time i want to have multiple copies of it so that i can use it for reference because let's assume I am giving this to QA. Now QA suddenly comes and asks me, hey, can you give me the build which you did one hour back? Now how will I give them if I keep overwriting? So that is where for every product, you are going to have one common image name. Okay, so in that way, if I want to differentiate multiple images for the same product, then you are going to add something called as a tag which is exactly like how we have tags in Git, okay? So that every image that we create, we can identify the image using the image name followed by the colon, okay? So that is how in real time we will be referring everything. So now a tag is nothing but some string which is going to help you to uniquely identify multiple images that you have. So now what happens? Every time that you are trying to build, a image or you are trying to refer an image when you are trying to create a container you have to tell the image name and the tag but in our all our examples whether i build an image or whether i am trying to refer to an image we never gave the full form so that is where if you do not give the tag name by default the tag name will be taken as latest. Okay. It's small case, but just to show you, I'm just telling. So that is where if you have noted, I told you in the very beginning or all also in the last time, whenever you're trying to refer, it is always going to refer it as latest. That means now when I did docker build iPhone T image 00, what it was trying to create is image 00 latest same way when you actually said docker run iphone it send to us or ubuntu or nginx or apache whatever that we did it was always referring to latest okay so that is when if you do not give a tag name it's always going to be latest however it is good for us to give a tag name going forward so that now if you ask me from morning in this session i have at least created some uh, 20 times the image now how do i differentiate each one of them that is where you should have a naming convention within your organization using which you will be able to uniquely identify the tag now for example let's say for every build i want to uniquely track then when i am creating the image what i should have done or what we should be doing is i should be doing something like build one or the next time i can say build two again it's not mandatory that i should be having now suppose if you are trying to create an image in which you are trying to give it to a customer and you want to track it with version then the same what i can do i can try to say that okay i will say version or whatever the name that i want i can give version 1.0 or now if you try to understand in this example what is this 12 represent so 12 represents that the version of the ubuntu that i have taken is 12 so that way now if this is a os 
they might be giving some version like this now later on let's assume that in this i'm giving ubuntu 18 then now you need to know what is the tag number for ubuntu 18th version so that you find out and then you are going to get so that is where whenever you are referring you are going to refer to your image with respect to the image name followed by the tag okay so remember that so that way now so far we don't have any registry created so whenever we try to download we were directly trying to download from the docker hub right so if you go to docker hub now it's similar to your github you can use your gmail and create an account and login now however if you go to docker hub you can search for any image that you want that will give you the exact tag now for example if i want the ubuntu itself search for ubuntu now this is where depending on your keyword search it is going to show you all the images which is available okay you can see these are the different flavors available but this is the official image which is given by ubuntu if you go under this and if you scroll down you can see these are the tags which are typically available for us to use okay so if you scroll down you will be getting all the information about it so this is where depending on your need you can try to take a particular tag which is available and that you can use and in fact now you can come and see that that is leading us to the docker file that they have created and they have stored it into github okay so that way for every image that they are creating they will be using the same way that what we did so the only difference is what base image that they are taking and after that what files they are trying to add and what are the instructions they are going to do and then if you come and look at it the last instructions that we have okay so this is how for every image that you are going to generate there will be a docker file and there needs to be a particular tag name so like this you can search for all the images that you want okay so think of any application that will be dockerized so that now in real time use case instead of you trying to install and set up everything as an application you can think of using jenkins for that now for example if i come to centos these are the available tags so i can choose the tag based on which os i want so that now instead of saying centos if i say centos and this or the centos colon this is the tag name then i will be able to get this particular image you can see the tag name so that is where going forward whether you are downloading or whether you are using it inside your docker file instruction or whether you are creating your image you need to give the image name and the tag and if you do not give it will be as a particular latest as the keyword okay so this way what you are doing is you are creating the image now comes the next point if i want to share it with others just like your git workflow after you do a commit you need to push it so that way when you push it will be going to your specific registry so that way like i said in the very beginning there are different private registries that you can set but for the context of the class i'm just trying to use the default docker hub so that make sure that you have a account created in docker hub now going back to the workflow like what i said in the very beginning okay so once you have created your own image now if i want to share it with others then i need to push my image inside the registry okay so that's where if you come back if i want to share this image to someone else you need to know what is your registry and you need to share to it so in order to share the image to a specific registry now there are some steps that you have to follow the first step is when you are creating an image you are going to specify it using the tag now first you need to log in to your registry okay so when you are logging to your registry you can say docker login and you need to give the registry details because 
if you do not give anything like what i am going to do it will always refer to docker hub but as an organization when you have a private registry you need to give the details of that okay so now in this example i am going to use docker hub considering the time okay so if i just go ahead and say docker login without giving which registry you can see it is going to the default dockerhub.com okay but however if i have a separate registry i can give that now i'm just giving my username and password so that now the docker daemon in this machine is connected or successfully logged into the docker hub so that now anything that i try to push from my machine it will be going into the account specific to my account in docker hub that is the registry for me the same way here what we are going to do is so one minute so here after the login if you want to push now this is where before the push you need to do another step called tag okay now to keep it very simple okay like if you are going into an engineering or a medical college what you do is first you go to the counseling get your seat booked right then once you book you will be getting some reference id and that id is what you are going to use until you complete your degree and even after you complete that is the degree id that you are going to have the same way when you are trying to put a image inside the registry first you need to give a reference and that is the reference that you are going to use going forward okay so that way when you say tag tag is nothing but the image that you have in your local machine that you are going to refer and tag it to some image that you want to push it finally inside your registry so that way you are going to tell your local image okay followed by what tag that you have used to create and now you are going to tell what is the image that you are going to have finally on the docker hub or the registry that you have so in that you are going to tell where is the registry and followed by what is your image because ideally if you see we don't call it as a image name we call it as a image repo okay so that way you are going to tell and then followed by what is your tag that you finally want to update because the tag that you have created here is for your machine but what is the tag name that it should be available on the registry is what you are choosing okay so now to show you this example with what i have done what i should be doing over here is now the image that we created if you go back and refer it was apache img right so now i should say docker tag this again it is latest because okay let me just show you that first so all the images that we created is latest now what is this these are the intermittent layers which we got broken because when we try to run the docker build and when it failed right these are the ones where it see that there is no id proper and there is no name for that but anyway for all the others you can see it is the latest that we have or the corresponding id now if i want to tag then i will say docker tag and what was that i literally forgot okay apache img apache img and then yeah now i'll just show you exactly like if i don't give latest it will work because it will take latest but this is the way that i'm going to give and now where is my registry so my registry is docker hub so in that way if you do not tell the registry then it is always going to be your default registry which is docker hub but along with that now this is where i need to tell where is the repo because like git if i have to push it to github then you will be saying github.com 
slash your account in which you are going to put or the repository name of yours and then inside that you are going to tell the commit id right the same way over here if you see i don't have to tell the registry because by default it will be referred as docker hub but i have my account created so that will be acting as a repository for me so there i am going to tell and followed by that what is the final name of the image that i want to put so now i will just say the final image name should be apache colon let's say this is the tag name i want to give okay so by this what you are doing nothing you are just trying to create a reference that's it but next step what is needed is to push the image so for that i have to say docker push and now when you are pushing you are going to use the final tag that you have created here okay so this is where now you are trying to tell hey push but when it is trying to push you can see it is nothing but a reference to your local image which is available so that is where like i was telling you similar to your engineering or your uh, medical seat how you are going to have you are going to refer everything to this as a final step and now here if i say docker push i will be saying this so watch what happens you can see internally it's automatically using the docker hub so docker.io is nothing but docker hub and it is trying to push the image into a new repository that i have and under that you will be having your image uploaded okay so this is the whole process where you are going to create a image and you are going to push it so now if you go back to docker hub okay let me sign in so you can see we just now created okay so like this for every image typically you are going to refer it as a repository and then work and that's where you can see that there is one tag which is available now based on this in real time as you start pushing it you can see there will be multiple tags available if you do not give anything it will be latest but however depending on your need you can give as many images that you want and inside that you are going to have different tags okay probably i'm just checking for a image okay so in this you can see there are two tags that means there are two copies of this image and now if any one of you want to use then what you are going to do you can see this is how you are going to refer because now if anyone in your organization wants to use this image then they are going to say docker run hyphen it and the same way your registry the repo from which you want to take or the image name so this is how you will be able to refer in your real time to specifically take a particular image from a registry that is available in your company which is private registry and not just this when you are trying to use your from instruction in docker file again you are going to give like this only okay so this is where you need to remember going forward any time that you are trying to refer a image it's going to be based on the registry of yours that is a private registry and then the repo or the image name followed by the tag so if you do not give the registry that is going to be your default registry which is docker hub and the same way if you do not give the tag it's going to be the latest tag so that's where the whole concept of image management will be coming so based on your need and if you have permissions to create you will be creating images as per your need and you will be pushing it to the respective registry and if not that's where you need to understand as a devops engineer what you are trying to do if you are trying to use the container and just use it for your day to day work then you need to know what is the image available in the central repository so you're all going to do is download that image create containers based on your need start your application and use it as long as you want if not if you are going to create a image for your product 
and that's where you need to know what are the things you are going to put so based on that you are going to write a docker file and then using the docker file generate a image and then share it back to the registry so that others can pick it up in the same way how you have done okay so that's a whole process where there are two things wherein as we said image management and container management so if you want to just create containers you just need to know what is your registry what is the image and the same way if you want to create your own image then that's where you should be knowing what should be your base image and then what are the instructions for which you are going to write a docker file and using that you are going to create an image and then push it back to your specific registry okay so that was the whole intention of uh, getting and separating it into image management and container management hope uh, it was clear to everyone and once again uh, just to keep the uh, video so i'm just stopping the session and uh, thanks for joining but